Like many of you, I want to live a life free from financial strain. I don't want the stress of finances following through my life. I currently am a 29-year-old female. I have no credit card debt. I have no student loans. And I've completely paid off my car and have over $100,000 in investments. I'm on the journey to finding that freedom and I want to help others get there with me. So today we're going to go over five bad money habits that my grandfather, who was a banker, and my father, who works in the financial field, have taught me to absolutely avoid at all costs. So let's begin. The first bad money habit that I'm going to talk about is not auto investing or paying myself first as other people put it. Essentially, every two weeks when I get a paycheck, I immediately put money into either savings or the market. This way, I'm either saving or I'm letting my money work for me instead of just spending it on material goods. I automatically have it withdrawn out of my checking account on my payday, so I don't even have to think about it. I know that when I get paid, that money gets taken out of the account and put either into savings or an investment account. The rest of the money then is there for me to spend the way that I would like to spend it. This simple habit has helped me quickly reach over $100,000 in investments that will continue to grow over time and allow me to have a safety net in place if something unforeseen were to happen. The second bad money habit that we're going to talk about is being at ease with debt. My dad has always taught me that there is good debt and there's bad debt. Unfortunately, our society normalizes debt, leading people to incur debt on even minor purchases. My guideline is, unless I can pay something upfront with cash, I'm not going to go into debt for it. This doesn't mean that I can't go purchase a car or purchase a home. Those are things that not many people can pay cash out of pocket for. But for everyday items, this philosophy works. Remember that credit card companies profit when you mishandle your finances. With the average credit card interest rate being a staggering 22%, this can add up really quickly. The third bad money habit that we're going to talk about is not knowing your income or your expenses. Understanding your financial starting point is crucial when coming up with realistic financial goals. Lifestyle inflation or the tendency to increase your spending as you start making more money can become a very slippery slope. We get a raise and we decide that we wanna buy a fancier car or upgrade to the bigger house. It can really lead to issues down the road. Wealthy individuals keep track of their assets, liabilities, and have concrete financial goals in place. By being comfortable with looking at our finances and understanding our goals that we have can allow us to continue to be smart with our finances and not just running around with our eyes shut. Below in the description, I've linked both my balance sheet and my expense report sheet that I use monthly to keep track of my finances. And I wanna gift them to you. So please download and use them to keep track of your monthly finances. The fourth habit is having an expensive hobby. Shopping can often become a big financial strain. I very rarely will go on some sort of shopping spree or really buy things unless I absolutely need them. And when I do go on a shopping spree, I only buy things that I can actually afford. If your goal is to enhance your financial health, you have two primary routes of doing this. The first being save more of your existing income, and the second being generating more income potentially by creating additional revenue streams. Ideally, a blend of both is the most beneficial. Here's why. If you earn more money but squander it all, you won't accumulate wealth. Similarly, solely focusing on savings might not yield substantial growth considering there's a limit to how much you can save. In contrast, income generation is limitless, offering infinite growth potential. It's therefore crucial to evaluate both sides of the wealth building equation. How can you save a larger portion of your income? And how can you generate additional income? Opportunities could arise from investing in the stock market, negotiating a pay raise, or launching a side hustle. Breaking free from the perception that saving money alone will significantly increase your wealth is a crucial step towards improving financial wellness. So remember, both saving and earning more are key to building wealth. The fifth and final bad money habit is waiting to start investing. The goal is to make your money work for you and it's important to diversify your investments. This way you can navigate different financial situations and conditions that may arise in life. Remember, simply leaving your money in a bank account isn't ideal due to inflation. In essence, your money loses value each and every year. So it's beneficial to have a mix of investments, both safe 
and riskier ones that you're willing to take a chance on. The earlier that you start investing, the more money you're going to be able to make due to compound interest. I hope that this information enlightens you on your journey towards financial freedom. Please check out my other videos on building wealth and making money work for you. Please like and subscribe so I can continue making more content like this for viewers like you.